Hello! Hello, AOS fans! It's the Agents of Sigma. And today we're talking about Electrocounts! Electrocounts! Electrocounts, no, this is not about boat rigging. No. Um, well, it sort of is actually. It's about, it's Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Mm. If you remember, those of you who had Empire Armies, you could feel the Electrocounts. They, yep. they were really great metal models back in the day. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which I loved. I think I've still got some somewhere in a box. Uh, but this game is a, an homage to that era. So this game comes from Cubicle 7, Cubicle which you may 7. or may not know. Um, they have the license for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. They're doing amazing things with that. They finished publishing the Enemy Within campaign or republishing the Enemy Within campaign um, last year. Um, and they've lovingly recreated uh, the best role-playing game ever. Um, and... And now they've brought out this game. It's a reskin of an old Martin Wallace game that they also produce, which is a Doctor Who game. There's a oh, Doctor okay. Who version of this, which I've never played. No. Um, but it's, so it is Martin Wallace, so it comes with quite a gaming pedigree. Um, he's, a, he's a sort of famous designer. He, he designed Wildlands, which we've played on, oh, on the channel. Okay. Yeah, that was good fun. Yeah. Um, so we just wanted to have a quick chat, to let you know about this game. It's coming out January 2022, which is where this video is being made. Um, there's not much buzz, buzz about it on Board Game Geek at the moment, so I'm not sure if it's out yet, uh, but it will be out imminently. In fact, by the time this has been lived, it, lived might, it. it, it might well be out and available to buy. Yes. Um, and Pete, what do you think? I, I really like it. So for, for those who don't know, it's a card-based game, as you've probably seen the stacks of cards been fluttering around. It's card-based, there's no models, uh, there's no dice, there's tokens, lots of lo lo tokens here. Um, and it's a multiplayer game, so you can play up to four players with it, which uh, we haven't had a chance to try it with four players yet, and we need to get not Stu back into we the do, studio. We do, we need to, to get a couple of people it. in to play uh, at least three or four players. I, it, it's it's fun for two players, but I, I feel like it will be total carnage with, with four players. Yes. Um, and in some ways, possibly feels like it might be less tactical, just kind of just hit and hope. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Just, but but uh, just really good fun. So I would like to play it with more, but it's, it's a really good fun game with two. It doesn't take that long. It's sort of about 20 minutes, half an hour, once you know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, once you know the rules, there, are, there yeah. are a few little question marks, and then once you get your head around those, yeah, it's a quite, a, quite, a, quite a quick game. And it, I, I think probably, uh, uh, almost in true Games Workshop style, I suppose, one of the, the best thing about it is the way it looks. Yes. <laughs> yes, there are, there are mul many, many cards in here, um, and they all have absolutely fantastic... Artworks and some of it is some of the old school Warhammer artwork, um, like the Allied Mercenaries one, which I it, this is for actually the Italian mercenaries, and it, it is the old the old style artwork. Yeah. Which I don't know if it's an old picture or whether it's just in the style of. I think it is. I think I, I recognise this one. I'm pretty sure that this is a nineties. But it, sort they all have era. this sort of amazingly crammed, sort of tottering wooden buildings. Yeah. Uh, sort of um, big weapons and armour kind of vibe to them. Yes. Um, and they just, it just, it's just so evocative of the old world. It is the old world. It beautifully captures. I mean, the, the front, the front page on the rule book and the box. It's very like John Blanche's early uh, paintings of the of the knights sort of riding up on the, you know, rearing up on his horse. Yeah. It's, it's just, and the artwork, as you know, production values of Cubicle 7 is brilliant and it goes through into this game. And I think if you like the Empire at all, you would just love, just basically, you just want to frame these. Yeah, yeah, I think you just want to just come up with a, a like a, a little grid of them yeah, and just stick yeah, them on a mounting board. Because they're, they're beautiful. They look awesome. Yeah. And the, but the game is good too. Is that, don't get me wrong, oh, the best thing about it is the art. The, the game, <laughs> yeah. the game, is um, it stands up to scrutiny? Um, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, if you if you're interested, we'll do a playthrough, but we're not quite yeah. sure how it would visually look. But we can go through the rules in detail. So we're yeah. just going to do an overview of the rules now. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below if you want us to do a playthrough to explain some yeah. of these things in more detail. And, and if, if, if this is the first time joining us, do think about clicking and liking and subscribing. We do also the bell. War, Warhammer type content. And actually, we're in a bit of state of flux at the moment. So you, if you do join and subscribe and comment and stuff, you've got a chance to shape what we do. What we do here. Yeah. So yeah, um, flux all over the place. Yes, the fluxing everywhere. The kind of uh, thrust of the game is that there you um, each have a hand of cards at any one time yeah um, and you have to choose what you want to do with your cards but then you pass some round so you're never it's never like entirely your own you haven't yeah. ever entirely got your own sort of strategy going on. you have to think about what you're giving your opponent and yeah. what you might get back um, but then you you basically have to try and stretch out as many uh, locations like you all start off with a location outdorf middenheim or salzamund or ubersreich 
um, but then you, you you gain other 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 locations. Some of them are places. Some of them are things like rich farms and yeah. generic or Moors generic Park or a right place. side village or the muddy banks of the Stir and all that kind of. And thing. And you kind of so. want to get as many of those in front of you as you can, but and, but then you have to keep them defended. And yeah. at the end of the game, however, the the person who's got the most it's not quite who's got the most. Um, locations because they have different it's how many victory defended point locations values. they have got, different yeah. victory point values as well so some are, yeah, you want to defend one that's worth five more than one that's worth two but you have to have them defended or at least not attacked yep. in order to score from them so basically during the game you're attacking one another's locations defending your locations um you can you can sell some of your cars yeah. to earn shillings and you can gain shillings in other ways and when you get like four shillings which you get loads of little tokens for which is awesome you can then buy more cards with that um and you can just, the actual mechanics of the game are dead simple. You place defenders on locations, the yep. defenders have a points value. And we have the garrison here, the von Kragsberg guard, and they have a value in the corner which just says they're five. And that's, you know, you can have another card with them and that might be a seven and then you've got 12 points, for example. Never happened in our games. No, no, I think there was one. I think there was one where I got okay. into the double figures. Oh, did you? But, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> because I think I used these guys, Baron Olaf's own regiment on foot, which is the value of eight. Uh, yeah. And so you could have them with, uh, now there are some rules about which ones you can place together, but if you could put these two together, you could then also put them with the Heistlenberger's Crusaders, which have a value of eight. So you could have a value of 16 there. But it has a Warhammer feel. You're talking about being able to put cars together. You can put college and magic people together. Yeah. You can only put, you can put certain mercenaries with, you know, certain things, certain things ally. Yeah. So you've got your tiny mercenaries. You've got uh, the um, halflings are in there, aren't they? Yes, the allies. halflings are in there, So yeah. it's got that kind of old school Warhammer feel, which is really lovely. You've got a card Lump, showing. Lumping croups, fighting cocks. <laughs> Uh, but before that, you get these tokens which show your siege when you're sieging places, when they're under siege, and you have these uh, barricade ones as well. And um, a fortification. Fortification, sorry, yes. Uh, and if you can get a certain number of those onto the board, I think it's eight of any type or five of either kind, then you win. Yeah. That ball, the game ends at that point. We don't win. The, yeah, game, the ends. game ends at that point. And so you, if that's you've got you, in that position, you start counting victory points. Yeah, and if you're in that position, you've probably got a good chance of winning it as well, based yeah, on. You can kind of rules. force the end game yeah. uh, if you think you're in a, in a uh, position to win. Otherwise, you've, eventually, you basically this, this deck of cards sits in the middle. It's quite big. Yeah. It sits in the middle, and you basically work your way down towards the, this end of game card is towards so, towards the bottom. Say how many cards? Twenty. Are in there? Oh, I don't know. If, oh, I don't There's know. Twenty cards, isn't there? I think. Sorry, it's twenty at the uh, twenty for the end of game card. You get thirty-five attacker cards, thirty defender cards, twenty support cards, and support cards will do special things like earn you coins or enable you to do other stuff, and twenty-two location cards. So, so what's total, that about six thousand? Six thousand three hundred forty-two by my maths. So that is, you know, you're looking at just over a hundred cards there in total. So yep. So you work your way through those. If you get to the end of game card, then you go into the end game sequence, yep. which is slightly different. Um, but you basically need to build your store, protect your store. And then hope, hope at the end, during the end game you come out on top. Yeah, and and there's a lot of little subvertive tactics in there. Like you might have three cards, but one of them might be a really good attacking card. You know you've got to give that to your opponent, or maybe you sell that attacking card, gain two shillings, use the other two shillings that you've got, and then buy a new card, and maybe you get a rubbish location or defender you can pass card. That and you can pass that <laughs> instead and go, you're welcome. Yeah, because um, you have to you have to pass three each turn. You, yes. you must. You can have two in reserve. Um, but you and you start with seven, and you have but you have to pass three on. So you yep. always have to bear that in mind, um, and that can really be a problem because you're like, I want to attack all the locations, but I can't because I need to keep hold of yeah, at I, least three in cards. In our game this evening, I almost immediately got rid of too many cards by attacking yep. everything. Um, attacking and defending is sort of hidden. So if nothing is defending something, you can put an attacker and you put them face down so your opponent doesn't know yep. what's there. Similarly, if you're defending something that isn't being attacked, you put that face down so your opponent doesn't know what's being attacked. Um, it's kind of, kind of drafting, it's not really drafting, but where you're passing cards around to each other, that's always nice yeah. too because you will always have to have one eye on what your opponent might be up to. Um, like I thought, I, in the game we played tonight, I thought I was well in control and I suddenly realised that all, all of the, as we were getting towards the end game, all of the locations that I've been passing Pete all the time, he suddenly could, could put them all stop, out. Stop playing them all. <laughs> like, oh and, my God, hang on a minute. And get loads of points. And, um, <laughs> it was only because I very jammily drew into a load of attackers right at the end. You uh, could then just jump uh, on top of them. I could jump on top of them, yes. The one thing, the, the only problem I have with this game, um, Ooh, you've, you've always got to come up with a, a little bit just to um, balance it out. Um, you, you can get, obviously the defender and attack cards can have values from one up till about eight or nine. Um, 
but in quite a lot of situations you can find yourself in a, in a place where a value one attacker or defender fights a value eight attacker or defender and whilst that value one player is obviously massively outclassed by the value eight fighter they'll probably both be dead and wiped out so it kind of feels a bit you feel a bit robbed sometimes when you're that fighter with that value eight card like oh but i lost it to my, that value one card but you can do the same so it's not yeah i think it's problem. one of those things it it, it works me mechanically but not necessarily yes. thematically thematically yes. yeah because it, it you know you have to work around that or you have to you, you have to be clever with your yeah. low value fighters. But yeah. Pete's absolutely right. It feels a bit rubbish that when when the Crusaders go up against the flagellant mob, um, they and they all get mulched. They, 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 yeah. they, every, everybody dies. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Yeah. But, um, there were a few bits in the rules that we took a couple of games before we were like, right, okay, I think we've got this one. And there are a few cards where it references something where we think that maybe the text could be words clearer. slightly differently maybe yeah. a bit clearer or maybe they needed a few more keywords to say this is what this means and then when yeah. we reference that that's what it means um but yeah, i think the, between uh, us we managed to come up with most of the player a card things. is a little bit light on rule so if you're just yeah. using that to particularly in, in the end game don't yes <laughs> check yeah. check in the main rules make sure you read that. i mean <laughs> but the main rules themselves are Very thin. about eight 10 12 pages including the index and the front cover and everything yeah. so it's it's there are very little rules in there and where there are any questionable areas you can very quickly come up with a solution because any solution you come up with that benefits you is going to benefit your opponent anyway and that's the thing i like about it's it's completely balanced yeah you know there's no way that you can come up with a, a dodgy scenario no no which is really nice it's like everybody's playing with the same on mm. a level playing field yeah. um which is quite unusual for warhammer so i would say if you want an old hammer game that you know that plays in under half an hour then this is for you. It probably, I guess more more players would take longer. Than, I guess it would yeah, but you get less cards. That's so true. when you're That's when true. you're playing two player, you get seven cards That's in true. your hand. When you're playing um, three or four players, you actually only either get it says on this little handy reference here, you either only get five yeah. cards if you're four players or six cards if you're three players. So I guess it would go around quicker. And you still have to pass three cards on, so you just get less cards that you can play so with less, before you can do it. So do less things. Yeah, that's true. So it does, it does um, that. So yeah, if you want an old hammer feel, go for it. If you just want a quick card game, to be honest, just go for it it's really nice really Box nice is nice and small really nice so. artwork um and there is a doctor who version if, you, if doctor who floats your boat check that out yeah 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 um so overall this gets a thumbs up from me i really like it yep definitely from me i mean i was predisposed to liking it because i love <laughs> the empire i mean yeah i mean who doesn't like uh, the old world and the yeah Warhammer i mean i would fantasy. love I, I um i the the fantasy role play stuff is amazing that they've made but I just don't have the time to sit down and, and play yeah. with a group. Whereas this, I can actually foist this on people who are fixed. into Warhammer and they yeah. can have a nice game um, and then join some of the pictures. just sit there drooling over the cards. <laughs> and, and then, and then uh, I've played Warhammer. So yeah. I would definitely recommend it. So yep. There you go. So there you go. Go out and buy it when it's out. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Do give us a shout in the comments below if you'd like to see us play or give a few examples of how the game plays. If you're yeah. interested in that, if you've got a copy of the game now and you're you're unsure about anything, do give us a shout and we can give you at least our take on it. Um, obviously, the guys and girls at Cubicle 7 uh, have email addresses you can contact as well if you do want to get hold of them and say, how does this work? But I do give us a he shout. Says, he says that. He's got no idea whether that's actually oh, true. They, they do have emails. They've all got whether emails they, Whether they days. want you to email them, I don't know. Yeah, I'm they're, sure they're, they do, they're, they're, they're all lovely. They are lovely, yep. lovely, lovely people. And uh, thank you to them for sending us this copy yes. to review. Thank you very much. Yes, we, this was sent to us for purposes of making this video. Yes. So we're we'll definitely going to be playing more of this in the future. And let us know if you want to see us feature that on the channel. Absolutely. Um, and as I said, uh, at the top of the video, if you, this is your first time watching Agents of Sigma because you've been drawn in by being a Cubicle 7 fan or a Warhammer fan or whatever, then do like and subscribe, please, because it means so much. It means that I can eat. Actually, that's not true. I can eat anyway. Yeah. But. Uh, and ring that bell because if you don't ring that bell, you will not see any of our content when we produce it. Um, you, do, you will get notified if you do ring that bell. So please do. And yeah, like Rob says, like, subscribe, follow, leave a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of.